Okay, so this is a short podcast, an introduction to Intra Programming. Okay, so Intra Programming is linear programming with the additional constraint that the decision variables uh, x, k can only take integer values. So although this sounds like a, uh, a small modification of what we've done before in linear, linear programming, making the uh, additional constraint that they're integers actually makes the kind of algorithms a bit more complicated. And then there's a further, a further kind of uh, constraint that we can add on. Instead of having the decision variables just as uh, integers, we can just have them as binary. And uh, in that case, the problem is called a binary integer problem. And what we mean by that is if we're trying to decide on something and the decision is yes and the variable is 1, if the decision is no, then the variable is 0. So that's what a binary integer program is. Uh, in this podcast, by example, I show you one of I solve a problem uh, with MATLAB. Uh, in the course notes uh, by Kurt Langfeld, uh, this, these actually go into some of the uh, algorithms in solving this problem. And uh, there's a worked example for this problem with some of the maths behind the branch cut algorithm. Uh, in this course, I'm just for, in this little podcast, I'm just going to set up the. Uh, uh, the problem, then convert it into constraints, and then I'm going to essentially use MATLAB, and I'll discuss some of the issues with using that package to solve a, uh, a binary integer problem. Okay, <clears throat> so an example, we're going to uh, study this specific problem uh, with a California manufacturing company, and it has uh, this company has work factories and warehouses throughout California, and it's trying to decide whether to build a new factory in uh, Los Angeles or in San, Fran San Francisco or perhaps even in both and as well as uh, the building a, a new factory the management is also considering building one new warehouse and they're only going to put a warehouse uh, where the new factory has been built okay. and so the question is uh, should the company build factories uh, where should they build the factories and where should they build uh, the single warehouse as well? That's the problem. And, and this is obviously a yes-no question because either you build a factory or you don't. It's either the decision variables are going to be either one or zero. So here's the little table. Build a fact factory in Los Angeles, decision variables x1. Build a factory in San Francisco, decision variables x2. Build a warehouse in Los Angeles, decision variables x3. Build a warehouse in San Francisco, variables x4 and uh, each one of these decisions has uh, creates a net value uh, in a certain amount of money nine five uh, this is in millions so if you build the factory in, nine, uh, in Los Angeles it creates a value of nine million if you build it in San Francisco it's uh, five million but also it requires a certain amount of capital to build these towns so if you build a factory in Los Angeles it requires six million build it in San Francisco it's three million and we have a budget of 10 million for the uh, capital management so the problem is we want to decide what factories they're going to build where they're going to be and where we're going to put a, a warehouse if we indeed decide to build a warehouse so we're going to try to uh, maximize the net value and there's going to be constraint on the capital required up here Okay, so here are the decision variables. They decide whether we build factories or warehouse. Variables are named either between 0 and 1. And there's four decision variables. And the objective is to maximize the net value of the installations. Okay, so here's our objective function f equals 9x1 plus 5x2 plus 6x3 plus 4x4. And if we go back to the previous table, that's the net value. That's, that's where the 9, 5, 6, and 4 comes from. So if we skewed ahead to the next slide. So that's the objective value. We're trying to maximize the net value. Uh, here's the constraints. Okay, this should be uh, the building capital uh, must not exceed the budget of uh, 10 million pounds. Sorry, that shouldn't be a dollar sign there. And uh, from the previous slide, we have 6x1 plus 3x2 plus 5x3 plus 2x4 is less than 10. And uh, so here's the capital required 6352. And this is our budget for the. Uh, of the capital. Okay, in the problem there's also some uh, additional constraints. 
uh, they, they're only going to build one warehouse and the warehouse variables are x3 and x4 and one way to constrain this if x3 and x4 are uh, constrained to be 0, 1 uh, to make sure that only one factor is built you have the constraint x3 plus x4 is less than or equal to 1 so that means that if both variables are uh, are 1 this is out this is uh, doesn't uh, this is not consistent with the constraints okay so this gives them this constraint that we only want one warehouse which is x3 and x4 and the other uh, uh, the other issue is the fact that we only want to build a warehouse where there's a factory and uh, what this means is and uh, so uh, this is totaled up by this constraint here so if we build a factory uh, in place x1 then we then we only want to ensure that there's a warehouse uh, in the same place and it reminds you that uh, x1 was uh, factory in Los Angeles and uh, X3 is a warehouse in Los Angeles uh, so what happens here if uh, if we don't build a factory in Los Angeles this is zero so this constrains X3 to be zero so if we don't build a factory in Los Angeles then we don't build a warehouse okay and this jargon is decision 3 is a contingent decision because uh, the decision on 3 depends on the decision on 1 okay and similarly before uh, if we want to build a warehouse in San Francisco, we have to first build a factory there. So that means X4 has got to be less than X2. That if we have no uh, factory in San Francisco, X2 will be zero. X4 will be less than zero. So X4 warehouse in San Francisco will also be zero. So this constraint here constrains the fact that uh, we only have a, a warehouse in San Francisco if we build a factory there as well. Okay, so uh, converting all, so we've converted our maths mathematics, uh, we've converted our text into mathematics. Here's our objective function. This is the maximum the net worth. This is the capital bu budget. And then here are the constraints for whether we have uh, uh, just one warehouse, and to make sure we only put a warehouse where there's a, uh, a factory. Okay, so as before, so this is the, the stuff we've converted all our text into mathematics. So now the next question is to uh, convert that into MATLAB. So this is an integer uh, problem, but if we kind of ignore the fact uh, in the previous slide that the number's not uh, integer, we can convert that into, um, into MATLAB code. So here's the objective function. And remember that MATLAB likes to, uh, likes to minimize numbers so, uh, because uh, that's just the way that MATLAB works. And because we're looking for the maximum, I have to multiply the objective function by uh, minus one so here is the nine five six four and then this is coded up as the objective function in MATLAB minus nine minus five minus six minus four and we have to put in the minus sign uh, to uh, because we want to maximize and similarly when we get to the end we have to remember by convention after we won the limprog on it we have to multiply the answers to the FFF uh, by minus one because we multiply this by minus one to maximize then they you know, the rule is we multiply the solution by minus one for the just for the objective function okay so we converted the constraints uh, this one's the capital constraint into matrix notation uh, here's the constraint that we only have one warehouse this is uh, x3 plus x4 is less than one uh, so this row here goes together with this number here uh, and then these are the, these are the constraints uh, that we only put a uh, warehouse where there's a factory. So these are the uh, binary constraints. And, and then the, the new thing, the prop, uh, if you put in, if you just run the lint prog as we've done before, uh, the uh, which uses the, the lint prog algorithm, it doesn't work. And it just turns out for this, uh, for this problem, you have to use a different algorithm. You have to use the dual simplex algorithm and uh, and if you don't do that, the, uh, the the program won't converge. Uh, the other new thing about this as well, we're also putting bounds on the variables. Uh, you see here, we don't have constraints of the variables less than zero, and you can put in constraints here. This is the lower bound of x1, zero, the lower bound of x2, x3, x4, and here's the upper bounds, 100, 100, 
uh, as well. This will be more important if we get on a bit later. Okay, so in this case, we're just to learn, this is the most naive thing you can do if you're solving an integer program. You just use the standard, the, the Linprog program, and then say I'm going to round the numbers. Okay, and if you just run the uh, the code like this on the previous slide, you find that the variable x1 is 0, x2 is uh, 2.667, x3 is 0, and x4 is 1. Okay, x4 is 1, that's an integer, but we wanted x2 to be uh, an integer, and it's not clear that uh, how to round this properly. You could have it up to 3, but uh, uh, 3 sort of a long way to from 1. And it's not not so clear. That it's the optimal how to uh, 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 how to proceed. Okay, I put down the actual mathematics of integer programming is probably harder than linear programming uh, when the variables are just real variables and uh, the actual kind of add ones are harder. I mean, obviously, when you're using MATLAB, there's kind of less an issue because you just you're going to use a slightly different uh, uh, program interface. So there's a program in MATLAB called intlinprog, and this will solve linear programming problems in MATLAB. So the uh, the way it'll work is uh, the interface is very similar to the or the way you call it is very similar to the way you called uh, linprog, but it's just a different function. So here's our matrix uh, F, and we're solving AX is less than B. So this is the same problem we should have had before. Uh, here's the AX, here's the B. We also have the bounds to keep the variables under 100 zero and uh, here we have the call to lin uh, in prog and the new thing here is uh, we have uh, this variable called int conf which comes here uh, f's the objective uh, and this tells MATLAB that the integer variables are one to four right uh, so this builds in the addition constraints to make the uh, uh, it to be a, an integer linear program problem rather than just a linear programming problem Okay, so the good news is uh, we, we run this code, we get x0 equals 0, x2 equals 3, uh, x3 equals 0, and x4 equals 0, and we get uh, the objectives to be 15. Okay, so th these are now integers, so that's a bit better. However, kind of the bad news is, you know, we're not going to build three factories in San Francisco. The problem really said it only wants to build uh, one factory in San Francisco or in Los Angeles. Uh, or in both. So this is really not really consistent with the constraints of the problem. So making integers or not was not enough. So the the key thing we'll see on the next slide is we uh, uh, so we we do the same thing. We still use int lint prog. If you want to make it a, a binary linear programming, we want to make sure all the variables. Are between one and zero. The, the way to do that is actually to change these bound functions. So the lower bound is this vector is the lower bound for the x1, x2, and x3 variables. Here is zero. And then the upper bounds are one, one, one. So using this lower bound and upper bound, this constraints tells MATLAB to constrain the variables to uh, to be either one or zero. Okay. So so this is the thing that the changes are. Uh, our uh, integer programming into a binary uh, integer programming, binary linear programming model that we have these constraints. And uh, this incon again tells the first four variables are integers. And then if we run the in, int lin prog, we find that uh, x1 equals 1, x2 equals 1, x3 equals 0, x4 equals 0. And this gives a, uh, a net worth of 14. And now things as, as we uh, asked for, uh, all the variables are either 1 or 0 as required. Okay, so what does the solution mean? We had uh, x1 equals 1, x2 equals 1, everything else 0. So the solution to maximize the net worth is to build a factory in Los Angeles and build a factory in San Francisco, but not to build any warehouses. Okay, if you look back, intermediate solutions with no constraints from integers or binaries have higher net worth. But when we build in the proper binary constraints, uh, the, this uh, 
this doesn't get the, the uh, uh, net worth as high, but uh, it does mean that the uh, the final solutions are consistent with the, uh, the spec given you know what the person asked for uh, in the textual description of the problem.